Hey there, and welcome to the Artist Appeals. I'm your host, Erin Sparler. And today I wanted to pop in real quick, and I wanted to give you a little disclaimer, a little heads up on this episode. In this episode, we have a rollicking good time, lots of fun, lots of laughs. We tell some jokes, and we even have a glass of whiskey. Why do we do this? Well, what else do you do? with a Scottish artist. He teases me, I tease him, he is horrified by my drinking flavored whiskey, and so we had to have a glass. Um, This gentleman has owned galleries in Edinburgh and London. He now sells his work online, does commission work, and does quite well doing it. Thank you very much. And he helps artists build amazing websites through a secondary business, which you'll hear about. So without further ado, Please welcome Jim Ewing to the Artist Appeals. And remember, if you don't like swearing, if you don't like drinking, and if you don't like having a good time, don't watch this episode, all right? All right. Well, let's get right into it and welcome to the Artist Appeals with Jim Ewing. Okay, so welcome to the Artist Appeals, Jim. We are here on, I guess it's nine o'clock on a Saturday night in, where are you? Um, I'm in Holland. Holland. And it's only two o'clock in the afternoon here, but it is Saturday on Labor Day weekend here in the U.S. So I think it's okay for me to start drinking since it's a holiday weekend, right? Yeah, I, and I, it's I, late I, for you, so. You have my you have my permission. You may carry <laughs> Thank on. you. Thank you. I need your permission, Jim. An officer and a gentleman at all times. Mm. Well, cheers. Here's to the fifth season of The Artist Appeals. Cheers, Jim. Cheers. Prost. Or- Prost. Yeah, Prost. Schlanzeva in Scottish. Ooh, Prost you... in Holland. What I, is... I'll, I would need to write that down. It, it's Gaelic. It means good health. Schlanzeva. Sh- I'm going to say this wrong. Schlan- Schlanze. Schlanze. Sh- va. Va. It sounds like. Schlan- Schlanzeva. Schlanzeva. Yeah, I'll is write that, right? that down. Schlanzeva. You... Well. <laughs> Up on the end? <laughs> With an American accent, it's not bad. <laughs> Schlanziva. Yeah. Or well, Prost. you know, we have a word here in Pennsylvania, schlong. <laughs> schlong. I it's a what... it's a slight, it's not very dirty, but it's kind of a it's kind of a watered down word for dick. Oh, right. Okay. Well, it's got I a big schlong. A, I don't, so I don't schlosh- have a water. I, I don't have a watered down one, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> and you don't Sorry. have a watered down whiskey either. No, certainly not. No, okay. I, actually, the secret. Are we going to get to this podcast? Oh, we need to Jim, start working. We need to start working, right? Welcome to my show, Erin. Let me ask you a few questions. Oh. <laughs> no, sorry. Carry on, Jim. I love you already. I'm You're not fantastic. trying to. Hi- I'm not trying to hijack your podcast. Carry on. Oh, please do hijack away. I love it. So, um. Jim, we are starting season five with rapid fire questions. So um, rapid fire question number one, folks. What is your number one top selling piece of art, product, style, or theme? What is your best selling thing? What makes you the most money or moves or what? Well, they're all, I sell very, very few prints. So it's nearly all. Um, original so it's difficult to say I sell a thing but I think if you look behind me do you see the picture of yeah. the, the man well the I one on the lot. left pointing yeah the, the one uh, the singer right yeah um, it's called the concert and mm-hmm. I do a lot of musical theme impressionistic um, I, to a certain extent abstract paintings and they seem to be the most popular they've sold throughout UK, Europe, um, Scandinavia, Canada, America. Oh, um, fantastic! As far, away as, as far away as Taiwan. No so, way. Yeah, that they're probably the most popular, and luckily I enjoy doing them. So, yeah. um, as I don't do prints, or I, you can people can get prints, but they never ask me. So, right, right. Um, that's probably about the number one category. Right. So you sell the most of original artwork with the theme of music. 
Well, I sell, I've got three categories. One is music, one is um, uh, um, realistic and impressionistic, and the other one is just purely abstract painting. So mm -hmm. I have three categories. And mm -hmm. um, hopefully, although I don't know, I'm thinking of starting a fourth one for um, portraits. I'm starting to do portraits again. So Ooh. maybe another one. You'll see. Cool. You want to paint me? It develops. <laughs> Sorry? You want to paint me? <laughs> I only paint beautiful models. So you would be a perfect subject. Oh, Ellen. You're flattering. Thank you. You're sweet. I'm not flattering. I'm just being <laughs> honest as usual. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Question yeah. number two. Go. What is the one thing you love to do or create the most? Mm. I think the thing I like to create most is babies and children. <laughs> um, I don't always get it right, but I enjoy the process. <laughs> How many kids do you have? Three. Oh, well, then you need to keep trying. One of each. <laughs> What's the third one? God knows. <laughs> I'm still trying to work it out. <laughs> well, in this modern day and age, you can be whatever you want. Well, you always could be, just we couldn't admit it. Yeah, but now we can. Now we can, yes. So I'm crazy. <laughs> you know, my mama always said, you know, everybody's crazy but me. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I yeah. love that. All right. Question number three. What is the one thing you hate to create or do the mm. most? And this doesn't have to be art wise either. Yeah, right. I was going to say that because I can't think of anything that I hate to create. Um, I think one thing I really don't enjoy is driving, um, which is crazy. I've got a recreational vehicle and we're heading <laughs> an off RV. to an RV. We're heading off to the south of France on Monday. Oh, so I hate you. <laughs> I, but I'm so jealous. When, South of France in an RV. That sounds I like an adventure. Eat your an way adventure. through France. But it's um, I hate I hate driving as a rule. When I was working, I used to do a lot of driving, mm. and um, uh, probably the thing I hate most is driving a lot or driving long distances. So mm. yeah, I agree with you. I mm. like driving. I like driving a five speed, and I like driving fast. But I don't like driving a long ways. Yeah, I got mm. a lead foot, believe it or not. No, I enjoy the 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 camper van's good fun because you can stop whatever you want and mm. um and you have a bathroom with you. Oh, which it's got, I always it's find really a, convenient. It's got a fridge. <laughs> it's, got a it's got a fridge, freezer, um, shower, bathroom, air conditioning, double bed. Um, Fantastic! Nice. Cold water. It's a small house. Yeah, house basically. on wheels. Yeah. All right, number four. What is the funniest or weirdest experience as an artist you've ever had? Tell um, me a story. Yeah, probably the weirdest or the strangest was years ago when I used to do some portraits. Um, I got this commission to come and paint this girl, beautiful girl. So I arrived and I started setting up and I said to her, how would you like to be painted? Mm -hmm. And she said, I really, I've always, always wanted to be painted in the nude. Can you do that? Okay. I went, certainly. But can I keep <laughs> sure, my no sock? problem. Can I keep my socks on? I like something to wipe my brushes on. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> you asked me. That's what an apron's for. Well. That was what that wasn't what she was wanting to look at. So <laughs> that's another story. Anyway. So did she have some big diamond? It's like the Titanic. Anyways, um, never mind. All right. Number five. What is the one most important piece of business advice you would give yourself if you were just starting out again today? Okay. Um I think the most important one. Um, unfortunately, it's not particularly easy, is that only a fool learns by their mistakes. What a clever person does, they learn by the mistakes of others. 
Mm. So ra- find, if you can, a mentor. Find, if you can, somebody that has travelled the road before you. Um, if you're talking art, try and find somebody that's selling a lot of paintings, somebody that's got a lot of advertising experience. Or um, listen to this podcast. You can listen to this. Well, this is where you learn. This yeah. is how you learn. You, it's stupid to make mistakes. What to do is talk to other people that have made the mistakes and then you can avoid them. Um, I like it. And it's not that terribly difficult to do once you understand the concept. You then start looking around and, and finding people and you will attract people to you that will help you. Yeah. Um, and you networking. will save your, yeah, networking. You will save. there's a lot of forums. Um, okay. A lot of nonsense on them, but there's a lot of good stuff on them as well. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of people you can talk to a lot of people that will help you. Yeah. So I think mm, generally, if you keep in mind that, you know, to try and learn, people say, Oh, I learned by mistakes stupid go and find somebody uh, learn the mistakes they've made and then try and avoid them as best you great can. advice well that's why i started this podcast was because i wanted to share everybody's yep. knowledge so there's hours yep. and hours and hours of interviews with all sorts of different people on this podcast yeah and i hope some people take things some things yeah. away from this i'm no yeah. expert in many things but I do know yeah, but you've had selling. multiple galleries. You sell uh, originals all the time. Yeah, you are I, on it, man. I love it. Well, I do know how to sell paintings. Number Look. five. Wait, this is number six. Is that whiskey getting to me already? Number I six. So. <laughs> We're only five minutes not, in. Not much point in drinking it if it doesn't get to you. you know? All right. Number six. Why do you think some artists can charge thousands of dollars for their work and other artists can't mm, right this is the I, elephant in the room yeah. isn't it yeah no, no I, don't, I don't think so um well it is because people sh- should address this now can i ask you a question yeah sure yeah do, do you mean um why sorry ask me the question again why do you think some artists are able to charge thousands of dollars for a piece of art Right. essentially get famous, make a lot of money. Right. And a lot of other artists can't. Like, we're struggling right. to sell $100 paint. Okay. You know. Well, the, it basically, I think it, there's two answers to the question. Or there's two sides to the question, right? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. The first thing is people don't value their work enough, right? Mm-hmm. If somebody is confident, they will go out and they'll say, this costs $1,000. Don't like it. Fuck you. I'll sell it to somebody else. (laughs) Right? Your timing was immaculate on that one. Yeah. I I did wait. I can see you. Now, (laughs) you finish before I carry on. (laughs) I don't want you spitting all over your camera. Coming out my nose. The more um, confident some people are both in themselves and in their work they will ask for a higher price right the opposite of that is that people that are possibly a bit timid or they don't really think their work is worth the money and they won't ask for a high price so that is an answer to your first part of your question the second part i think is why should you ask for more money? Why, why, why do some people know it now? Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay. People equate price with quality, Erin. They do. You go into a shop and you buy, there's a widget for $10 and a widget for $5. You automatically assume the widget for $10 is a lot better than the widget for $5. Rightly or wrongly, yeah. because it's twice as much, you think it's better. Yeah. You went to supermarkets, I'm sure it's the same in the States as it is here, mm-hmm. but you have white, white label products, right? Yep. And yeah. It's probably it's the com- difference between buying a Rolex yeah. and buying a Swatch. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably coming out of the same factory, but because it's got the brand, um, they charge more. Mm-hmm. Now, 
this brings me to two things. One, why should you charge for quite a lot for your paintings? Um, one, you make a lot more money. B, people equate price with quality. So if you sell a painting for four hundred dollars and you sell another painting for two hundred dollars, people will automatically assume that the painting at four hundred dollars is twice as good as the painting at two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. It's just human nature, right? right. Um, the second thing that then happens is that you actually build the value into your painting by yeah. putting your price up because yeah. you're saying to the person that's buying it, this is worth $500. This is worth $600. Yeah. If you say, give me $200, what you're saying is this painting's only worth $200, right? So Pretty basic. Yeah, well, putting your price up and charging a reasonable amount, you actually build value into your painting. Okay. Makes sense, you know. Yeah. Um, the other thing that happens, or what I do, um, I turn a negative into a positive. I Ooh, how? actually, believe Tell it or me not, about that. I put my prices up and I sell more paintings. Very simply, what I do. How does that work? Yeah. Uh, well, it's pretty simple if you think about it. Anybody can do it. What you do or what I do is I contact the people I've already sold the painting to. Okay. And I say, my prices are going up. I've, in fact, what I usually say is I've got some great news for you. You'll be glad to know that the price of my paintings is going up. Listen up, probably, folks. This is a script right here. I hear it coming. This is a big... you're, you're probably wondering why that's good news for you. Well, you mm -hmm. bought a painting last year or six months ago or whenever. Um, now your painting that you bought is worth more because my prices are going up. And if you want another one, you'll find the price will be up. Next year it will be even more money. So oh, wow. as well as having another painting that you want, it's in your home, you can live with it. Um, you're also it's a small investment. I mean, it's not a Picasso, but the painting is increasing in value. You mm -hmm. get a certificate of authenticity with it, which mm -hmm. has, you can use as provenance when you sell it. It's got the details of the painting, pictures of the painting. Um, it's got the date it was painted, what it was painted on, all the mm -hmm. information about the painting, which you get with your painting. And as well as having another beautiful painting, you also have a small investment in your hands. No, I love it. Of, so you call uh, your previous investors yeah. and tell them that the value well, they're not of actually the work... they're, they're, they're not previous investors. They don't buy the painting. I, they don't buy my paintings as investments. They buy them because they like them. So right. I, but there are I, previous contact my previous collectors. Yeah. And you and do I, this for everyone. So you yeah. tell them the price of my artwork is going up. Do you want yeah. another one? It'll be a That's great it. investment is essentially what you say. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. That's so fantastic. What you do is you want to put your prices up. How do I make more money at this? That's how you, well, that's how I do it. That's um, fantastic. What a great sales tip. It's not, um, it's not difficult to do. Anybody Thank you. can do it. And yeah. um, the, the other thing is that there's. Um, hey, let's define, wait, before we go on, let's define yeah. that word providence. Yeah. Provenance. Yeah. Provenance. Uh, provenance. Provenance. Let's promenade. Proven <laughs> pro pro no, no, it's not from walking. <laughs> no, it's not promenade. Provenance. Provenance. I think it's pronounced provenance. I'll ask next week when I'm in France. It comes from Is it a French, French word? Yeah. It basically means proof. Proof right? of. Okay. If you buy a Monet or a Picasso, you want provenance. You want to know. If you buy a Rembrandt, you want its history from the last 300 years to prove it is real. So what happens is that when galleries, when I galleries, when you sell the painting, you register it. Um, mm -hmm. You the Where person, do you register it? Well, you register it in your books, right? Oh, I see. And then when somebody sells it, right, mm -hmm. they've got this record. They can go back and check. And then I've got a record of where... I got the painting from from the artist. Fantastic. Then I've got a record, and then I give this to the next person. So when the next person buys it, 
he knows how old the painting is, when it was painted, what it cost when it was new. Um, you wouldn't buy a $50 million painting without knowing its provenance. You have to prove. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, it's what it says on the can, basically. Well, I think right. that's fantastic because that's so, another great tip. So that leads us really into the making of the art. Yeah. Our A for art. And then, you know, we cover these art product. Could, could, I, could I stop you just a second? Sure, um, sure. Just something I remembered there. Um, I'm sure that your people will be interested in because, again, you're talking about price. Yeah. When I had my galleries, right, there's mm -hmm. a sweet spot. There is a price, it's round about 350 euros, which is probably around about $400, right? Okay. Now, as well as my own website, um, I actually represented by the, um, the oldest and the best online gallery in Holland. Ooh. I've spoken to the owner of this gallery and mm -hmm. all virtually all his paintings we sell or he sells, he sells mine, other artists, yeah. round about the 320 to the 380 euro mark. That is a sweet spot. More than that, people have to think about it. Less mm. than that, they think, mm, no, I'm wanting a good painting. Right. Well, great Crazy. tip. So, so between three right, 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 so I make sure the sides are painted and if they're on gallery wraps, which are maybe five, right. 10 centimeters. Um, the okay. biggest, the best selling paintings I found for me and this other online gallery I sell through is roughly around about 80 by 60, which I'm not sure what that is in inches. Um, mm, is that centimeters or millimeters? About, it's pro, uh, it's, uh, centimeters. It's round about two, I believe it's two, almost it's two, two and a half two, centimeters two, 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 yeah, per inch. It's like yeah, 2.35 yeah. or 2.4 two, 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 two or something half. like that. So 100 by 80 is probably about 40 inches by about, um, what's the 80? About 60. Okay, so right. that's really big. That's like a four foot by five foot. No, painting. no, 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 no. Because no. forty uh, inches. No, no, hundred eight inches would be. Sorry, four. a hundred centimeters is. Um, sorry, I'm wrong. That's Two 30, and a half. 30, oh, 30 inches. Feet. It's just under. It's just under a meter. Well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, we've got some it's, sizes it's just, there. Just, it's roughly about a meter by about um, thirty inches. That, I was going to do the math, but eh. yeah, roughly, roughly 80 by 60, 100 by 80, around about $350 or euros. And you've got a good chance of selling that painting. Okay. Good tips. Okay. Good tips. All right. So making art, how do you, um, let's talk about the process. I yeah. know you do a lot of commission work. I know you sell all original paintings, but you've got them in themes. And I know you told me you do a, a fair amount of commission work. And I've heard from other artists that commission work is kind of like um, some of the best pro so uh, when we talk about products, we kind of talk about product ladders and how it's nice to have something that's kind of like on the low end, medium end, and then high end. And so I've talked to some other artists that commission work really is their bread and butter or really makes them a nice profit. Um, tell me a little bit about how you keep yourself motivated to create within these themes and your commission process for creating within these themes. How do you, how do you, do that okay um that's basically two questions 
It is. And, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm not a woman, but I can multifunction quite well. <laughs> I can I can cope with two questions. <laughs> the problem is I've maybe forgotten the second one by the time I finished. Well, let's the answer the question. Right. How do you okay. stay motivated to do paintings within these okay. themes? Let's start right. with that one. Okay. First of all, I don't believe necessarily in motivation or um, inspiration or, um, you know, I sit here and wait until I'm inspired to do something. Um, I think, me personally, and I have spoken to a lot of artists, what they do is they treat it to a great extent as a job. They right. start at 10 in the morning and they paint till four, or they start at nine and they paint till 12. They might paint six hours, four hours, 10 hours, entirely up to them. But they paint either every day or five days. They have a routine and they stick to it. And that's what makes them professionals as opposed to the hobbyist, right? If they Great, have told me, if they waited for creation or inspiration, they'd be doing two paintings a year. Yeah. So what they do is they get on with it. And my personal way of painting is I start with some kind of idea. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. So I start very, very loosely. I paint very freely. Mm -hmm. And over a period of time, the painting starts to talk to me I don't want hmm. to sound too arty but it starts to develop itself and then I slow down mm -hmm. and I maybe go and start doing some sketching or I may do a bit more work on mm -hmm. the painting um, and then I slow down a bit more and then I get into it so you do layers? Do you cover yeah. the whole canvas well, and then a base layer well, first? It depends. Some paintings, uh, if, I'm, if I'm using acrylics, um, I can usually do it in one sitting or I can layer it. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm doing oils, well, yeah, basically because of the, the drying time, I do some a la prima. I do some portraits a la prima. But okay. generally... Um, and a la prima means? A la prima means in one sitting. Yes. It means you don't layer it means that um, you sit down, you do the painting, that's mm -hmm. it, it's finished. Mm -hmm. um, the traditional method, Rembrandt, they, they, they would do 30, 40 layers right. and build thin. it up, build it up, build it up. Very thin layers. Of it. This is why Wax their on. paintings are so, um, so deep and so rich. Yes, yes. But um, the Impressionists changed that, right? The Impressionists yeah. just slather yeah. that stuff on yeah. and, yeah. you know, yeah. Aye. palette knives and yeah you can see I the brush strokes and so that was knife. i use a palette knife a lot mm. especially on my music paintings because oh the way the light hits it because it's not done with a brush it's done with a knife the surface is uneven so right. when the light hits it it changes the painting right and it gives it texture right it gives it texture mm. that's right um so a lot of them are done with a palette knife so um the act of creation or the inspiration is you just get on with it. I love your Show customer. Up. I love your people might not like that, but you're <laughs> asking me how I do it. Um, that sorts out the professional from the hobbyist. I find the professional gets on and does it and paints. So right. how many paintings a year would you say you do? Um, let me think. Difficult, different sizes. Well, there's 52 weeks per yeah, year, and if I you're showing up five days a week. With um, time off for RV, um, I probably do a, an average of about two a week. That's so fantastic. I and that do, I probably do about 80 or 100 paintings a year, but luckily I sell most of them. So, And your product you know. is originals. So yeah. that actually kind of leads us into the presentation part, actually. Yeah. Because you're not doing a whole lot of products um how do you sell those originals if you're doing that okay. many paintings a year two a week for 52 right. weeks a year you know whatever a couple hundred a year how do you sell them all well, like, how do you 80. present them i think it's only 70 or 80 but it's uh, still a lot I of paintings do, well may just do 200 and buy a bigger fan <laughs> Might might do more paintings <laughs> anyway i uh, okay 
there so are, yeah, presentation. Two, there are okay. There are two things. Um, one um, to sell a lot of paintings and sell them regularly. Yeah, um, I, I think everybody get, wants to know that. How okay, do you sell can, a lot of paintings regularly? I can only <laughs> give a, you. I can only tell you how I do it and give you my opinion. Right. Well, that's what we're here for, Jim, okay. is your opinion, your experience. Okay. Tell us. Right. I okay. know. Right. Put your seatbelt <laughs> on. Here we go. Right. Um, I'm ready. You need, you need two things. <laughs> One, you need to have a website with a wall factor. A wow factor. Yeah. A wow factor. Wow factor. And the how second... do you get a wow factor? Well, let me answer the second part, because that's only the first part of the equation. Okay. Second part of the equation is you need to have an effective Facebook advertising campaign. Ooh, right? okay. Now, I have a website with that wall factor. How do I have it? Because when I started, I had already ran two galleries right yeah. so there are certain things that if you want to be successful in a bricks and mortar gallery you need to have okay and what i did was um i found web designers that could actually in fact what you need is that you need to change your mindset forget the word website right okay think online so gallery don't think be intimidated gallery. by gallery. that i have a what idea of a website think no. online uh, gallery i like think it online gallery it's not a website it's okay. an online gallery to show your work and you okay. my website has been developed basically and it uses the same um what's the word i'm looking for it, it uses the same format hey, yeah the same yeah. It's, it's based on basically uh, how my gallery was laid out and how I yeah, showed paint yeah. things, right? So you right. showed me your website and we uh, are, uh, uh, yes, you can show us, factor. can you show us, you want to share yeah. a screen and show us and I'll, I'll talk as you pull it up. Oh no, you're stalled. Lost, okay. I lost your sound there, Aaron. Yeah, we had a little, a little snafu with the internet. Okay. It's freezing. Yeah. I can you know. Okay. I asked if you would okay. like to can show you us okay? your website. I can. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm an art to take on. Right. Let's see if um oh, do I need to share my yeah page. Let or something me take here? a note. Or did at I just 50? Flick it okay. Can you see it? Not yet. So, oh, let me. Can you can you see it? Mm, let me look. So what I was thinking was, ah, uh, yes, here we go. It's down on my Wacom tablet. Nope, nope, I can't see it yet. But we can put it up. What is your website address, Jim? Um, it's jimsartforall.com. Okay, so jimsartforall.com. We can layer over this. Okay. We'll show, so don't worry about the share screen. Um, yeah. We'll put it over top. So Jim's Art for All. You Jim's have is J I M S. J I M S Art. A R T. Mm -hmm. F O R. Mm -hmm. A double L dot com. Fantastic. Okay. So if you want to, if you want you to look at it, I'll gallery. take you through it. Okay. So I don't know if you can see it yet. Can you? You know what? I'll pull it up on mine. Right. And then we'll layer it over top. So, Jim, I looked at this before we had our podcast. And basically, um, you have a video of a gallery, yeah. like an actual white Actually, it's red. It's a red gallery. Oh, it's actually um, white. It's just this page is white. <laughs> um, this, mine's showing red today. I'm looking yeah, at it, but it's the, a beautiful this, this, gallery. This is, the, this is the thumbnail picture until I start the video. Okay. Hold on. Um, so it's an actual gallery, and these are your yeah, paintings so not, in it's it, a, right? a virtual gallery. 
So if I'll play this and you can tell me if you can um, see it or hear it. Oh. Get a drink, folks. I like the music, very soothing. Yeah. Try not to put you to sleep. Okay. Well, you, anybody can, they can watch the rest of that. Okay. Do you yeah. want to see more of it or? No, no, no. Let's get back to the, the talk. Okay. So that's so about thing... four minutes. I love yeah. it though, because it's a really nice overview of your yeah. work in a setting it's very yeah. captivating the yeah. music it, the um, voiceover that yeah, is the, a the, wow factor so that's yeah. a great example of a wow factor i love it yeah. the, the the biggest problem most people have is the bounce rate people go on two three four five seconds they go off yeah. um what this does it stops people and they look at it and they watch it yeah and then they look at the rest, then they go to um, the gallery. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And then you've got abstract paintings, realistic and impressionistic, musical theme paintings, which I was telling you about. Um, yeah. Go to this. So you have to then, keep people from leaving, right? Yeah. That's, that's the right. key yeah. to presentation. Yeah. So I think the second part of the question that we were talking about was the first part was, how do you present your work? And you said a wow factor. Yeah. But the second part is really, um, what was the second part? <laughs> um, the second part is how do you get one? Yeah. How do you sell them? How do you <laughs> sell all these? Like, how do you, okay. because you produce so much work. Like, right. that's what everybody uh, wants to know, right? That's, okay. that's, well, that's that, the that, biggie. It's really, um, it's a process, right? So the first part, is to stop them. They come in the door, you stop them, they look at more. So now they go to the next part. Can you see these? Um, there's one here, sea creatures, okay? Okay. So then they like that, they click on it, okay? Mm -hmm. And then they can see the painting. Um, they can so see would other you related say, paintings. Jim, would you say that the organization of the work, being able to search it, is more important or do you think it's the checkout process making it a smooth streamlined process well if you don't stop them and get them interested in a painting the checkout doesn't matter right right, right. Oh, and, and also to be to also if they like a painting and they go to the checkout and it's not simple and streamlined you will lose them yeah. So it's a, you need both. You need right? both. And um, then you mentioned, tell me about your Facebook advertising. You said that you have to have a great website with a yeah. wow factor. Yeah. You've got to have a nice organization so that yeah. they can find things by theme. You've got to have yeah. a good checkout that works. But then you mentioned advertising, getting people yeah. to the site. I think people want to know about that. How do okay. you drive traffic? get people okay. to see the website? What have you found to be effective? Well, I can tell you how I do it and I can tell other people how they can do it. Um, okay. First of all, um, I have um, a Facebook advertising, what's the word? Well, not genius, that's not. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> very good and very, very efficient. He gets me traffic Oh, it normally costs maybe $30, $20, $30 a day. I can drive traffic for about 4 or $5 a day, right? Fantastic. Um, how people can do it, um, how they can get a website like mine or better, 
and how they can get an effective um, Facebook advertising campaign very, very cheaply is because I've now set up um, a separate thing called Stop Selling Your Art, right? Ooh. And if people want to go to the site and then contact me and I will get my website, the same as mine or better, and I will get their Facebook page set up, all their pixels set up. I'll get them a free consultation with my advertising guy. They can talk about campaigns. They can talk about budgets. They can talk about Facebook, learn how Facebook works. And most important thing is, if they want to, he will actually set up, run, and manage their campaign for, I think, about $100 a month. Now, you so, won't get that anywhere for less than five hundred dollars. That's fantastic, so, Jim. So you yeah. have actually started helping artists. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know a lot of artists are really intimidated by the technical aspects of oh. building a website and even starting I'll a Facebook you, see, page, let alone advertising. Oh. So you're offering this service to artists to build yeah. a website? And it's, it's well under $1,000 as well. Build a Facebook page yeah. and Facebook. advertise on Facebook? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I want and, one. And um, we'll design a website. Um, I've got three website designers that um, basically only do it for artists. Now, when I say artists, I also mean photographers, jewelers, um you know, arts and crafts, potters, and any, cre any creative endeavor. I don't mean just paintings. Yeah. Right? So, Jim, in a way, you were a gallery owner before. This sounds like a natural transition from gallery owner to really helping artists yeah. online, start galleries online. Yeah. That's I've, neat. Yeah, I've got the time. Um, so nothing else I would rather be doing. Painting, helping other artists get... Um, you see, a website, let's say online gallery, you're better not to have a website than to have a bad one, right? Mm. Because mm. nobody's going to buy from a bad one. But people think, oh, I'll get a website and I'll start selling my paintings. Right. No, wrong. If you don't have a, a gallery, that, okay, do you still have my gallery on screen just now? I do, I do. Right, let me show you another thing that sells the paintings. Can you see this view, this painting in my room? Uh, yeah, I'm still on the video on the front. So I go to gallery. Got it. And got then it. go to a painting, any painting. Go to okay. I'm realistic at, and impressionism. I'm looking at, if you go to got abstract, it. right? Mm -hmm. And um, go to say, um, sea creatures. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can see the price. You can see the size. Yeah. Right. Then I've got view painting in this room. Now, yeah. What you can do is people can upload a picture. They can take a picture of their own room, upload it to my site, see this painting in their own room, change it about, change the sizes. How do you do that? You press the button here. Yeah. Right? That comes up and there it is. Right. That's like AR, augmented change, reality, you can, right? You can change the so size. You can make augmented. It, they can take a picture of their own room. Room. Upload it. Can you see this up, row, upload mm -hmm. room image here? Yeah, right. yeah. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Press that, right? Uh -huh. And um, I've got a thing in here somewhere, um, which is, if I can find it, it's room settings. Um, um, I can't find it. I'll, That's I'll all right. Look for it. Anyway, so what they do is they take a picture of their own room, mm -hmm. they upload, they, 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 up, they put it on the computer, they then upload it here, then they put the painting on, they can change that if they like the painting, but they don't like the size, I can do a commission, they can change the size, see what like it would be smaller. Uh -huh. right? So how did way. you do this, Jim? Did and you then, have somebody code this for you? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's um to pay for it, unfortunately. Um, and do you, yeah. but is this part of your deal where yeah. like oh, yeah. other yeah. artists could get this as well? Yeah. Yeah. All Very for cool. Under, all for under a thousand dollars. Fantastic. 
And um, as I said, we'll set up their Facebook ad manager, we'll set up their Pixel, we'll give them a free consultation, and then for $100 a month, you'll run their campaigns for them. Right. Yeah. Now, so. let's just define what the Facebook Pixel is. You've mentioned it a couple of times. Yeah. Let's just clarify um, for anybody I'm, listening. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a techie. I think the simple explanation is that when you advertise on Facebook, it um, collects data. Okay. Yeah, a lot of data. And, um, <laughs> what happens is that the you, you have a pixel, which means if you want to know how many people have bought a painting, how many people have went to your site, how many people have looked at other um, pages on your website, you create what's called a pixel. And mm -hmm. then whenever MD goes to the site, Facebook registers that and then when you go to your ad manager you can see how many people have went to your site how many people um, have went to the pages how mm -hmm. many people have went to the cart but not bought so you can go back and yeah. retarget them it gives you all this information the ad guy can explain all this and what um you know what, what, what pages you need on your pixel so that you can get the right um Right. Um, the, the right information that you need so you can get the insights. The long, the long and short of it is, is that a Facebook pixel essentially connects yeah. Facebook to your website so that right. Facebook yeah. can understand what the advertising you're doing on Facebook, yeah. how it affects your website. Yeah. So it's a fabulous tool, but it is techie. So you it's help people difficult. with that. Yeah. Yeah, you set it up for and no problems. That uh, leads us into educating, um, educating your could, audience. Could I, sure, could, could sure. I just, just one other thing I would like to say, probably the most important thing on this website is this yeah. small button at the bottom. Do you see that? I am sleeping. Oh, I see right, that I am because, sleeping. But Jim, yeah, you're not because, sleeping. You're talking yeah. to me. I've had to put this off because if I didn't, people would be wanting to talk to me while we're on the podcast to buy a painting. So <laughs> I'm doing this at normal consultancy rates, Erin, for the business I've lost, okay? <laughs> oh, you're charging me? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I'll get yes. a bill in the mail. Yeah, an invoice. yeah, yeah. well, it was very nice to join you on my show today, Erin. <laughs> no, the reason I'm saying this is normally that says, let's have a chat, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll and do you, you monitor very, that? Well, yeah, oh, I very For real. Well, I'll show you another. Would you want so to Jim, see some? Jim, want... how does that come to you? So it's a it's a it... widget. The again, the website designer puts that on your site, right? Okay? So it people... educates your audience. Yeah, but I mean, does that come to your phone? Does that it come comes to your to computer? Your, comes to your phone and your computer. And when you're sleeping, as you can see, you can put it off. And if they want to contact you, they leave their email, their phone number, okay. and any message, and you get it when you're awake, right? Oh, fantastic. Um, I'd like to make quite, to, to, to drive this point home, because um, it's very important. I All right. Listen think, up, everybody. Jim's got a I, strong, I, I, powerful I, point to make. Well, I actually can't think of a painting that I have sold that I haven't spoken to the person first. And if I didn't have this on my website, I wouldn't probably be selling a lot of paintings. Wow. So Simple as that. So the video, you need, yeah, the wow you need factor to, and this yeah. communication tool. Yeah. And they can see the painting together. in their own room. That's fantastic. So, I mean, you have a gorgeous website. You've got AR, augmented reality on it. You've got this chat feature. Fantastic. Fantastic. So let's talk about amplifying. Let's talk about how do you get it all done? How did you do all this? Like, this is a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 How do you um, how do you manage all this? What are some tips, tricks, apps? I don't know. Okay. Very simply, go to my site and talk to me. <laughs> what else can I say? Only a fool learns by their mistakes. You know, a clever man learns by the mistakes of others. So come and talk to me. I'll and tell you what, I have don't, made don't 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 make mistakes. Oh, um, guilty. 
guilty, guilty, guilty. I have made mm. plenty of mistakes. Yeah, oh, so have I. But you know, how many Jim, times you've been? How many times you've been married? Only once. <laughs> oh, I've done three times. <laughs> Third time's the charm, right? Well, the first time was only for six weeks, so I don't count that. Oh, that was pretty short. It was fifty years ago as well, so mm. I don't really count it. Right, so. but I mean. This is, here's my story about starting the podcast. I actually asked somebody for advice. I called another, I emailed another um, craft designer, uh, somebody that, another woman that owned a, a craft store with lots of different products in her store. And she was not far from me, 45 minutes or half an hour. And I was like, oh my gosh, how have you made all this progress, all these products and you've got all these SKUs and you've got all these things on this website. How do you manage it all? Let me take you to lunch. Let me buy you a coffee. Let's talk. And she came back and said, absolutely not. You are competition. And I will not help you. Nobody helped me. I won't help you. And I was like, oh, ouch, that hurt. So I tried again. I said, look, I just want to be your friend. Let me, you know, let me pick your brain. We're, we're not competition. I'm not selling the same thing. And she said, I don't have time for my friends. I'm too busy. So I don't have time for you. And I thought, I don't want to ever be like that. I want to learn how to do it all not still have time for my friends and I want to share it with everybody because yeah. that's just, that's sad. That's, she was so mm. angry. Even through yeah. email, I could hear her anger at life. And I thought, Oh, <laughs> yikes. No, so. there's, um, I don't know how many, I think it's oh, 2 billion people a day or something going to Facebook. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Dave, Dave Eamon, he'll know the figure, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but there are, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, Erin. Really? Let me tell you a secret. There's a lot of people don't like my paintings, but they might like yours. So I'll help you sell yours. No I competition. No competition to me. Absolutely no competition. So there are, the internet and Facebook um, are massive. And it's big. You just need to look at some of the most... Uh, okay, here's something to think about and the people listening should think about. Great art doesn't sell. End of story. Great art that is seen does sell. Ah, I like that. So you want to sell, we say in Scotland, you have to let the dog see the rabbit. It's not going to catch it if it can't see it, right? So if you want to sell your paintings, people have to see them. Right. No other way. So you need a website with a wall factor that will pull them in, that mm -hmm. they will stay on, that they will look at your paintings, that they will buy. Yeah. And you need, when I say effective, I mean a cheap advertising campaign three four yeah. five six dollars a day mm -hmm. you're not talking hundreds of dollars right, right. because great art doesn't sell <laughs> end of story great art that is seen does sell and the more people that see it the better the chance you have of selling it and there are so 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 many niche markets mm -hmm. my guy when he does audience he researches and he will find the right audience for your work oh fantastic right? he will put your work in front of the right people or he'll put your work in front of the people um that will probably or that will be interested in your work because that's one of the tickets isn't it yeah finding yep. the people that will like your work and yep. if you know your niche if you yep. know your theme and, and, and if if you go in and try and do your facebook advertising i'll let you another secret yeah it's a world it's a world i want to know all the secrets jim okay. tell me all that, your that, secrets that is a world of pain <laughs> you don't want to know about doing it yourself Oh, I've your, made that mistake. As a I world. set up a Facebook ad one time yeah. and it ran. And then I got a bill for like $768 or something. Yeah. I'm like, oh, uh, shit. Yeah. And so I try and understand 
pixels, oh. Facebook ad manager. I just kept going after find, it was supposed to turn yeah, off. Uh, I didn't realize, your, and oh, it was a rigmarole. It's a oh, whole world of pain. so much money. Find, I did get it back, an expert, though. So, and find an expert, let him do it for you. And I you love go, it. You go on with what you do, which is painting. Or That's photography, a great tip. or pottery, or I don't know, whatever people do, go on with what you're good at. Because I don't think the guy that does my advertising would try and sell a painting. And he's not a painter? No. No, so I mean, why would he try and sell a painting? Why would I try and run a, an ad campaign on Facebook? Mm-hmm. Every man to their own trade, as we say. Would you get a plumber, you know, to come and fix your car? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, go, 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 you know, um, find the right people. Fantastic. How do you get bigger? You find the right people. I love it. Licensing and contract terms. So I know you don't do a lot of licensing, but this is the section where I like to broach the topic of licensing and contract terms in plain English, because I know another thing that we artists are a little bit intimidated by, maybe a little scared of, is asking somebody to sign a contract. And you do a lot of commission work. Do you use contracts? How do you use them? And can you just tell us a little bit about your process for making sure that when you do commission work, you get paid? What what kind of terms and things and contracts do you use? um, I... If you do a commission, somebody doesn't like the painting. Morally, they shouldn't be paying for it anyway. Mm. Right. If you've not done your job, why should you get paid? Okay. Mm-hmm. So what I do when I take a commission on is I take a 50% deposit mm-hmm. and I don't have a contract. <gasps> or I do because it's done by email. Oh, okay. And, and accepted. I don't have a written contract. But that's a that's a paper trail. So Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, that's a good yeah. tip. That's really um, easy. So you have it I don't in ask the them to sign anything. I ask them to mm-hmm. agree. What I say is um that they pay fifty percent deposit when I start. Good. Before delivery, um I will show them the painting and mm-hmm. if they're happy, they send me the balance and I send them the painting. Mm-hmm. If they're not happy, I will make changes. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Especially with doing portraits sometimes. Do you, you know, do you have a number get... of changes that you'll make? Do you put a no, limit no, on the number of no, changes? No. no. Okay. No, no. It's, um, it's basically, you just have to keep the customer happy. <laughs> if you've not got it right, you can't blame them. Mm. Right. Mm. So then I show them the painting and mm-hmm. um, I will make whatever changes if required. If it's okay, they pay me. I send them the painting. Right? All right. Yeah. Um, very, very simple. As far as um, my own, my other website, start selling your art. There's no contract. Again, I. Really? There's no like, you have to commit to like a year's work of. No, no. What they do is they pay half, 50% up front. Mm-hmm. The website, <clears throat> the web developer starts the work. Mm-hmm. He develops it on his own server and he's in contact with the person every day every few days Mm -hmm. and as the pages develop he ticks it off right right Mm -hmm. when the site is finished they then pay the well then we pass it on to the ad guy who fixes the ad manager and the pixel on the site Mm -hmm. and then when they're happy they pay the balance and the web designer transfers it onto their server and off it goes, right? That's so fantastic. It's not the, the fact that I have told them how much it is and the fact that they have paid 50%. Um, we've entered into a contract, mm-hmm. right? And I'm talking about artists here. I'm not talking about, I, I'm trying to think of business. I know that America is a very litig- litig- litigatious, is that the word? Yeah, Society. we like to sue. I mean, everybody, they, they, <laughs> they sue if you stub your litigious. toe or something. I believe right. the word is litigious. We are a litigious, litigious. society. Right. Would okay. you believe I come from a family of all lawyers? I would all never, of them. I would never have known that. <laughs> 
no, I wouldn't have known that. So uh, it's scary. I don't I? I um, People I, used to say, "Do you want to be a lawyer, Aaron?" I'd say, "Hell no." Did you hear the one about the lawyer that was driving down the road in um, his big limousine? No. And he saw these people eating grass. Okay. He Why were they eating grass? He told his driver to stop the car. Uh-huh. The driver stopped the car and the lawyer got out and said, what are you doing? Why are you eating grass? The man <laughs> said, well, I lost my job and then I lost my house and we've no money, we've no food, so we're eating this grass. And the lawyer says, that's terrible. Get into the car. Come on, we'll take you home. Get into the car. So they get into the car, they're driving down the road and the lawyer says, uh-huh. you're going to love my house. I haven't cut the grass for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> So it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. Nothing, oh nothing, 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 nothing against lawyer. No, by the nature of my <laughs> yeah, work, but you were talking about licensing, and I will talk to you about that later. I could be interested. Then I would need to look at contracts, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I we like talk, the, we were, the well, simple we tip earlier. you gave us. That simple idea of having things in an email. You yeah. know, can be legally binding because yes. it is a paper trail. So what a what's now, up. I believe you did mention in our pre-interview that um, you do define things very specifically in the email. Like you're going to yeah. get this, 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 and you make it yeah. very clear. Yeah. Um, can you talk about that just for a second? What are those things that you define? In well, the email? would you like me to show you them? Uh, let's link to it. So tell us right uh, now and then um, share, we'll share it down below. Just because Send it, me that um, email I, and we'll give I, it to the customer. We'll give it to the um, audience as like a, a free link that go, they can go I and use it as a template. It, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Is it okay if we yeah. provide your email as a template? Well, it's not actually the email. It's what I put on the email. Um, Hold on, I need to plug my computer in, Erin. It's telling me the battery is getting low. Mm. Hold on. Right, there Speed we go. Up right here. Okay. Now, this is what I tell them in the email. Can you see this? Okay. Uh, I don't know if I can see this. Let me look. Uh, I didn't get a share screen. Oh. No. Okay. Well, I'll run. No. I'll, 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 I'll I'll run through it. Okay. 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 And what we'll put I a say... link down below and maybe layer yeah. over top. So okay. if you guys aren't seeing it. Okay. So let's see put, if we can put, get put, it over top. Oh, you're making me edit, Jim. Gonna make me edit this thing and put stuff well, over top. Well, you are a professional. You are a professional, Erin, aren't you? Mm. Goes with the territory. Sorry. Professional, what is the question? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, making fun of myself. Sorry. Oh boy. All right. So we are talking about licensing and contract terms. We're talking about your email that you send to people on the things that you put in that email. So what do you define in your email that serves as your contract to your custom commissioned customers? I hadn't actually realized it, but I do have a contract because um, when I send them an email or WhatsApp, because that's a paper trail as well, and um, what I say in it is for the price, what what we will do is we'll design a new or an existing website. We'll Mm -hmm. advise on how to get a domain name. We'll advise on what host to use. It will be responsive. There will be an admin panel. There'll be a payment portal. They can edit the site themselves. That will have a chat function. There is support. It's a one-time charge, no hidden fees. We will also set up their business manager, set up their ad accounts, verify their business manager, pixel integration and website, mm-hmm. and check that the events manager and the pixel is working. So that is what they know they're going to get. So, so this is the contract that you do with yeah, artists to build their yeah, website and to market yeah, their work for them. That's yeah, fantastic. And yeah. you use a basic email contract for custom commissions. Good yeah. deal. Finally, 
S for success. How do you measure success? You've got two businesses. You as the artist, you as a gallery owner, provider. How do you measure success? And when you hit those goals, how do you celebrate? Well, I'll be 17 a few months. So if I'm waking up in the morning, I'm ahead of the game. That's success. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, what I usually do is have a small whiskey or a large whiskey. Right? <laughs> I, I don't know if it's just because of my age and what I've done and what I'm doing, but I don't really try and measure success now it's not um to have a not good about life the Benjamins? no it's um, no 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 okay it's nice to have money um i've been rich and happy and i've been poor and happy and i certainly prefer being rich and happy right <laughs> <laughs> you can Wouldn't put money we? in that one yeah or you can be miserable in great comfort if you have a lot of money mm-hmm. right so true, true. i the money is obviously everybody wants to make nice a lot of money. But yeah. really, I enjoy selling my paintings. I enjoy helping other artists that don't know how to go about selling their paintings or have been trying to sell their art and have yeah. had no success or they've spent a lot of money and got nowhere. They get yeah. dispirited. Um, so I like talking to them, helping them selling my paintings, talking to my customers. Yeah. Um, Because, I mean, when I had the gallery, a lot of customers over the years became friends. Yeah. And the same thing is happening with um, my online gallery now because I've sold a few paintings to people now and they've told their friends. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you make friends through it as well. So it's a full life, Erin. I get up in the morning. I'm a professional, so I start painting. I don't wait for inspiration, mm-hmm. or I'd be sitting all week. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have people contacting me wanting a website. Um, I have people contacting me wanting a painting. I get the opportunity to talk to beautiful women like yourself. <laughs> oh, I, you too much. This is true. No. So I have a full life. I, I don't. I I am measuring my success just now. I'm reaping, well, you're measuring success and happiness, it sounds like. Yeah, I'm reaping the rewards of, I, you know, when I retired, um, I sold my galleries and I bought a small sailing boat. I went off and I sailed around the Greek islands for 10 years. So that was great fun, right? Something oh, in life. And yeah. um, I used to sell my paintings as I went along, which kept me solvent, selling them to the tourists. And then tell um, me about that. How did you paint on a boat? Well, very simply, what you used to do was you used to go and um, say to find an empty bar, right? Uh-huh. And um, you would get a, a picture of a postcard or a person. Anyway, you say to the guy, I'm going to start painting here, whatever you're going to paint. People are going to come in, they're going to have a beer, they're going to be watching what I'm doing, they're going to want to see the painting finished, you're going to make a lot of money. So if I just sit painting, you just keep bringing me beer. He goes, okay. So that's what I did. And then I would usually sell the painting to somebody at the end of it. So, oh, that's fantastic. That's one so way you're planting it. plein air in a fabulous it'll play, location. Or play, plein air and a, a nice taverna looking over the med. Um, difficult to actually paint on the boat, you know, because. And you're drinking from... free beer as you do it. I love it. So they get yeah. customers. Yeah, get I cu- get free beer. I get money. So win, win, win situation. The um, customer and I used to get their details. So some of them that bought paintings in Greece, I still talk to them. You know, oh, that is such a neat story. So they yeah. they still remember you from that. Yeah. Oh, we met this crazy yeah. Scottish guy in Greece Aye. painting in a yeah. bar. <laughs> and if they had time, I would do some portraits or try and do some portraits. You know, yeah. um, Jim, that so... sounds like a joke. So I met this Scottish guy painting in a bar. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> when he wasn't drinking, he was painting. Right? <laughs> so um, when 
uh, I discovered after 10 years, um, I had a large boat. It was um, 12 metres. It was 23 tonnes. It had been around the world twice, right? Wow. Um, it was steel. It could go through, go through the Arctic ice, this thing. And That's a big boat. Yeah, a lot of work on your own. I was ending mm. up doing more work and less. I was doing very, very little sailing and very little painting. I was ending right. up just working, maintaining the boat. So I decided to sell it and mm-hmm. buy a recreational vehicle instead. Mm-hmm. So when I go off. Not on... quite as romantic as sailing well, around the you... Greek Isles. Although south I of will, France. I, I could take you to deserted beaches in the south of France that you would find very romantic but mm. I wouldn't tell my wife <laughs> are you okay. flirting with me oh boy <laughs> I, 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 I'm blushing I, I, I you're a beautiful woman you put yourself in front of me what do you expect me to do you know <laughs> well Jim you're too much fun I and I want to eat my way through the south of France seriously I will well, come visit I, you and your wife also, and I'll bring my husband um, I'll bring my kids and then you'll be like okay leave those behind <laughs> No, I also sell paintings in France because I just, yeah, I find a a busy spot and I set my easel up. I just start painting and people come and talk to you. What a great uh, tip. So really painting in person is a great marketing tip. Yeah, yeah, go out and find a busy shopping mall and start painting. You know, people will come up and talk to you or, (laughs) you know, want to buy it or speak to you, you know. I love it. Um, Yeah, yeah. Find a bar where they'll give you beer and sit in it and paint. I love that tip. I never would have thought of that, but I love it. Sit in a bar and paint. Although, you know what? Come to think of it, I used to do that in San Francisco when I was in grad school. I'd come home from a long night of classes and 3D animation, and I would be sketching in the bar. And I would pass my sketches down the bar and ask the drunks what they saw in my abstract paintings. Like, I'd Mm. ask them to turn it. (laughs) <laughs> and then when they would say, I see a duck or I see a penguin or I see a whatever, you know, I would look at it and I would augment whatever that was. I mean, mm. they were really just abstract doodles with pen and ink. And yeah. I remember I used to stick my finger in my drink and, you know, smudge the see, ink. Uh, 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 um, I forgot about that. Uh, Thank uh, you for uh, the reminiscence. Art uh, uh, um, uh, is like life erin only you can make sense of it mm. <laughs> only you can make sense of your life only you can make sense of art so sit in a bar paint anything people will come and buy you a drink and talk to you fantastic. and you sell you will sell something fantastic you know. And on that note, thank you so much for all this fantastic advice you have given us Jim yeah no problems at all. Go and look at my sites. Go and look at both of them. And if oh, you wait, to... wait, before, before we cut this. Yeah. Where can people contact you? Tell us your two websites again. And do yeah. you have a special offer for anyone um, that might be listening? I think I could have. A glass of whiskey? No, 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 no. I think I'm thinking in monetary terms here, which is what most artists look for. Hello? Right. I'm here. I've lost you. I've lost you. Um, no, I'm here. I'm here. Hold on. I promise. I'm, if we're just about to finish, I'm just going to pour myself another one. Okay. Go for it. Well, we yeah. can stay, but I'm trying to give us a definitive okay. stopping point for the show. Okay. <laughs> well, two things three or four things one stop making mistakes or that's not that's not true um stop change your mindset from you know i learned by my mistakes right and change it to i'm going to look for people and learn by their mistakes right right I like um it. also put your prices up people will equate price with quality nobody invites somebody into their home and said look i bought this print in walmart for 30 dollars isn't it beautiful but they will say 
I bought this painting. It was eight hundred dollars. It's quite a lot, but it's from really a worth it. Drunken don't, Scottish don't, don't, dude in a bar. Don't you love it in the Christ. islands of Greece? Yeah, yeah. it's a story. Well, that is a story. Yeah. I've heard that from other artists too. Is that you buy the story? So yeah. one, one, learn from other people's mistakes. Two, don't raise sell your, your prices. Up. Don't yeah, and when you've got a customer, put your prices up and sell them more. Oh, I like that. Number three, right. raise your prices um, and sell them tight. another one. Yeah. Uh, number four, create a story around your work. Well, every painting I just said, I don't want to digress, but every painting I sell. <laughs> um, you don't do want I to digress, think? Jim? But wait a minute. Isn't that what we've been doing all along? No, you've been running the show. I've been digressing. <laughs> to be fair. To be fair. Yeah. I'm trying. Well, I'm... Another thing that you should do on your site is that you should have um, a story with every painting. Don't just put your painting on and um, say this is for sale. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give them a story behind it. Um, Like uh, the painting behind me, the, um, the hall, take Elvis or shaking Stevens there. The hall is hot. The joint is jumping. The fans are screaming. Don't you wish you were there? The man is rocking to and fro. He's only singing to you. Mm. Why not have this on your wall? Something like that. Not just, do you like this painting, 500 euros? I like it. And also put it in a room setting. Ah, yes. Yeah. Don't just put. And if you don't know how to do it, guys, Jim will do it for you. He'll do the whole nine yards. I spent, the best. I spent 18 months finding three website developers that um, will can do it. You can see what they can do and they will do it very cheaply. So that's you amazing. You don't Jim. have to go and learn yourself. I've already done it all for you. That's amazing <laughs> because honestly, I've there are a lot of web design companies out there that'll help you build a website quickly and easily. You know, Wix, yeah, uh, yeah, Shopify, yeah. whatever. Yeah, but they yeah. don't have. They're not specifically for artists. No, no. They don't have augmented reality. They can't put no. your art on the no. wall. Although if they do, you know, like art storefronts has that. Yeah. But they still don't do any sort of marketing and really the whole marketing aspect is um, critical most of the facebook advertising pixel linked to website and then um an easy to use checkout cart that that is a hell of a deal well without repeating myself i think it's point four if you want to sell your work online there's only two ways to do it. One, you need a website with a wall factor and you need an effective Facebook marketing campaign. Unless you're going to sell through galleries, there is no other way. Yeah. Actually, I think that was five and six. So where I do know. we get all this, Jim? This all started right. off this okay. week. Okay. If you want really to buy a painting. Path, where if, do we find you? Because we're going to hunt you, want... you down in that bar. Hmm. <laughs> Please do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me stop you. If you want to buy a painting or just see the website or see my paintings and see how what the website is like, very simply, jimsartforall.com. Jimsartforall.com. Okay? Jimsartforall.com. And where do we get a website if we're an artist and we right. want you if to do it all you, for us? If you want to start selling your paintings online, very easy to remember. Start selling your art.com. Cool. I want a website. Maybe I'll hire you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have mates rates. I think we talked about this. <laughs> you know, we have we'll mates talk about rate. it later. We have mates rates. Okay. Anything else? That you want to ask me or um... thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you for being on the artist appeals. This has been fabulously fun. Wait, how do we say that again? Prost or a salut? Salut. Salut. Uh, Yeah. What was the Scottish one? A schlanziva. Schlanziva. Schlanziva means good health. Bon santé for France. That's good health. Bon santé. Yamas. That's Greek for cheers. Mm. I never heard Prost. that one. Yeah, Yamas. 
Right. You guys, if you know a a, a cheers, put it down in the comments. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> Join a lot. Us. There's a lot of them. Here's two wives and lovers. May they never meet. That's a Scottish <laughs> one. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that's a good Scottish one, believe me. So, oh. um, right, if anybody wants to contact me, I'm easy to find. Go to the website, I'm on WhatsApp, I'm on, um, you can email me, WhatsApp me, you can Skype me. Um, right, right. As I said, I'll be And you have enough. that, that yeah. actual thing on your website where you are actually answering real people, real time. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. What a great yeah. feature. Yeah. So very cool. Yeah. So guys hit him up. This has been an amazing interview with Jem on the artist appeals. And thank you for watching season five. That's all folks. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>